It's the 100th anniversary of the UK Michelin Guide and the Michelin Building in South West London. The centenary is very important to us because it's, it's an important landmark. Um, it marks 100 years of development of the guide in this country um, and we've seen a huge increase in the quality of food over that period of time. Um, this year there are 143 stars which is the most we've ever had in the guide and it just reflects the, the rising standards we've been seeing over the last 25 or 30 years and additional to that it coincides with the, the, the centenary of Michelin House itself which is, is always inextricably linked with good food and fine dining. The Michelin Guide is the most famous food guide in the world. Um, and I think the power of the guide stems from the fact that when it was first released, it was when people first started uh, road travel. So the whole thing of one star meaning um, worth a stop, two meaning worth a detour, and three meaning worth a special trip meant an awful lot. Because in those days, you know, to get from one end of France to the other by car took you days. You could probably fly to Australia quicker than that. But there was no other guide at the time that attempted to do that. So it's got the tradition. Um, and I think for whatever anybody says, any aspiring chef dreams of having a Michelin star. I certainly did. And I remember when I got the first star, it was kind of, I had, to, I had to pinch myself. You know, I kind of grew up following the great chefs of France. And then to find yourself in the same red book that they are in, it's just incredible. I mean, obviously having a Michelin star is one of those sort of almost schoolboy dreams. It's something that, you know, you've read about over the years. Of course, you hear about the Bocuse and the Gerard, uh, Verger, Toigro, all of these great chefs um, who become legends. And so to try and follow them or even get that, just that little bit close, or even if you're a mile away, you still want to actually try and uh, emulate what they've created. So uh, Michelin, I think, you know, when you're in this industry, it, it can create the most amazing inspiration in a lot of young people. It's a positive, I think it's a positive thing. Um, that's a little surprise when we got one, but um, a joy, a joy. I think having a Michelin star is vital. It, it really is, for me anyway, it's very important. It's the, uh, the, uh, the cherry on the cake, let's say, la cerise sur le gâteau and uh, it proves that we are at a certain level. So be it a big gourmand, uh, or one star, two star, or three star, it's something that uh, all chefs aspire to. Well, the impact of being including in the guide already, it's already huge for them because it's a recognition process, it's a selection process. The one who's been recognized with a special award like a big uh, big gourmand, or a Michelin star, will get 25% more business. The one actually get two will get a national uh, clientele, and the one getting three among the 90 best restaurants in the world will be really attracting international clientele. So this is really the impact of the Michelin Guide. And you know, it's not by pure accident that we, the number one in terms of selling guides around the world, we're selling more than 1.2 million per year. And it's not by accident as well that the chefs recognize us as the only benchmark really to measure against each other, not only in the city, not only in the country, but globally. Once you've got a star, you really don't want to lose it. So the only way of trying not to lose it is striving to get better. And this is where the guide works really well. It's obviously there for the customer. It's not there for the restaurant. Um, but it ends up, the guide has ended up driving the quality of cooking up because chefs, it keeps them something to focus on because every year, anyone that's got one doesn't want to lose one. And anyone that hasn't got one secretly would like to have one.